Good morning. This is my good friend and colleague, Paul Kirschbaum. I'm Leslie Wooten. It's 1033. Let's get into it. Today's topic is tipping. Um, so Paul, yes or no, do you like to tip? Do I like to tip? Yes. I really enjoy tipping. Okay. Why do you tip? <laughs> Sometimes I feel obligated. Let's, I mean, let's just okay. be honest. Um, but um, I, I definitely will. I have a, basically a, a sliding scale. If you don't, if you do below average, you're going to get 10%. Um, okay. I can pick out the things that I'm in the, I'm in the business. So I'm a little more observant than most, I think. Um, but when I, when somebody goes over and above, I'll, I'll tip 25%, if not more, if they, if they blow my socks off, um, you know, I know it's hard sometimes because especially when you're on a tight budget, sometimes people build in, you know, they look at the menu and they actually shop the menu because they know they have to tip into it. Mm -hmm. But I, in general, yes, I enjoy tipping. How about you? Uh, I, I, I love tipping. I, I really do enjoy to tip. Um, you, you said that it, you could go as low as 10%. Yeah. And then you said, oh, if they have great service, I'll go up to 25%. Um, do you always stay in percentages or do you ever tip based on how long you're sitting somewhere or um, how long you've been there or just in general, how much is in your wallet? Good question. Is it yeah. percentage? The dur duration that I sit down determining my tip, it matters. Um, it, de it depends. I mean, it really does. If I'm at fine dining, it, it makes a big difference. Right. Um, if I'm sitting at a bar um, and just getting, you know, eating and drinking all day, it's, it's, it's less of a thought process. Um, but again, when I'm sitting at a bar and eating, you know, eating and watching a game, I'm tipping as I go. Um, okay. So then it's not a percentage. I'd tip per drink. If it's a $2 right. PBR or if it's a, if it's an $11 mudslide, I'm not drinking a mudslide. Let's be honest. And, and um, I, know some, I, know, <laughs> I know some businesses will charge like uh, for that PBR, they'll be like $1.50 PBR so that they can automatically get pretty much a 30% guaranteed tip because somebody's going to give $2 and no change. So the, the, the server bartender automatically gets 50 cents on that dollar fifty. Yeah, I mean, I mean, have you ever broken a dollar to tip somebody? Oh, please, no. Oh, goodness. I mean, Absolutely. I've broken a 20. Sure. But I've never broken a dollar to tip somebody. You just you go to a concert. You're not going to say, oh, no, can I just do 50 cents? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, unless that's the change. I mean, it, if, if I'm buying a dollar fifty beer and the change is 50 cents, I'm getting $2 and that's it. Well, um, that's why we price things in the restaurant for them not that to happen. And especially with tax, when you price things, you know, if you want to be an even $2, $3, whatever it is, you put that in consideration. Absolutely. So um, on that, so we both, we both like to tip. Like I really enjoy it as well. Um, why do you tip? Why? I don't, why, why do you tip? Why do you, when you go to a restaurant, what's the, what's, what is the first thing you think of? When, when you get great service? Uh, well, I, I like that. Like, why do I tip? What do I think of when I get great service? The great service is why I'm there. Um, I, I, I know what prices look like. I know you know what prices look like. We know that restaurants get a better price on the beer that they're buying than we do at home. And let's, let's be honest. The beer you're drinking at home, let's say, is definitely under a dollar. Like, I'm, I'm having a beer at home for 75, 80 cents. And I'm, I'm, guessing there. I don't know what kind of beer you drink. Maybe you got a $2 beer. Maybe you got a $1 beer. Either way, it's less than if you go out to a restaurant. So why do I want to go have a beer at a bar when I could have that exact same beer for far cheaper at home? And the difference is the atmosphere and what people are bringing to the table. I want to be there. I want to be around people, whether I'm engaging with them or not. I might just be sitting there all by myself but enjoying the atmosphere. Even if I don't say a word to anybody except the bartender, I love being in that atmosphere. And it's not about the beer. Cause if it was about the beer, I'd stay home. It's yeah. about the atmosphere and the beer's there. And so why do I tip? For the same reason that I pay a, an exaggerated price for the beer. I, if you're there for the price of the beer, you should stay home. I'm there for the atmosphere and the, the engagement and the, the service. So that's why I'm paying way too much for a beer is because I'm not there for the beer. That's why well, I- 100% agree. I, I, I summon one, one word, experience. I go for the experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what today's consumer is going for. Um, after this craziness that we've been dealing with the last three months, 
um, experience yeah. is going to be the main driver. There's the number one reason people go to restaurants is value and experience. Yep. Uh, I know they're two separate things, but you have to have a value, but you better give them an experience because they're not going to come back if they don't have one. Right. And if, if anything that personally um, we're learning here throughout this, um, this, this lockdown, this quarantine, whatever you want to call it, is that we can save so much money cooking here, eating here, making sure that we're taking care of all of it. My, my alcohol consumption isn't that much different than it was before, but the, the money I'm spending on it is so much less because I'm paying for it here. And what do I want to do more than almost anything right now? Go have that same beer I'm having in my kitchen out at a bar and am I gonna pay more for it? Of course, but why do I wanna go? Cause I wanna be in the atmosphere. And that, that to me, is why I tip. I'm paying for the experience. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. I mean, the reason I like to tip is because I like to go out. I, it, it's human nature. Uh, we like to be in crowds and around people. And, and I really enjoy giving people rewards for doing something that I feel, A, I don't want to do or have done, one to two. And B, yeah. they've done a really great job at it. I have no problem dropping, dropping money uh, you know, I, I do, I do feel guilty though when I kind of give somebody a bad tip. Um, I almost want to sit them down and have a conversation with them. Oh, that's that's just that. so, <laughs> it's absolutely a question that I'm going to get to on uh, bad tipping as well. But I, I, I wanted to transition real quick into a, a different question, same topic, obviously. Um, do you haggle on Craigslist or if you go to a flea market or something? Do you haggle over prices with uh, who you're buying something from? Do I haggle? Mm -hmm. every single day of my life. I'll haggle with my wife. <laughs> I have, I, there's, I actually had this conversation with my, my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. I will haggle everything except for a car seat. Okay. If I buy a car seat, I'm going to buy a brand new car seat. I'm not going to get something off Craigslist. Okay. Yeah. Everything I look for, I look for use first. Um, if I can't find it, then I, then I'll go buy, you know, brand new, but there's very few things that I'm like, Oh, let's go get that brand new. Sure, I think that's that's a, a economy shopping that you're doing. But my my more specific question is: once they get, once they give you a price, do you try to Absolutely. get a different price? Oh yeah, that's that's, that's I'll, I first I find it used, and then yeah. I'll haggle it. Um, they'll say two hundred dollars, and be like, uh, and now depending on what it is, well, you know, I know yeah. what fair market is, um, mm -hmm. and most people go yeah. high, so I go in, you know, I go in low. Get, if they say two hundred, I say one fifty. Um, wow. I don't want to insult them. Sure, uh, sure, depending sure, on sure. what it is, but sometimes. When there's a lot of it out there, I don't care. It's like I'm gonna get the best price I possibly can. Um, but yes, I haggle almost, but I don't haggle in the restaurant. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I, so I do not like haggling. If I'm at a flea market or Craigslist or something and somebody says, it's this price, I'm like, cool, I like that price or I don't. Um, something, something with me is, is once you set a price, I'm like, oh, that's consumer. That's, a, that's a, a black and white number. And I don't know why, because um, I understand the logic and the, uh, the fun even that's in haggling, but I don't like to do it. Um, and and it's, it's, I don't know, I just see it different as tipping, but it might be considered the same thing when you're, when you're looking at the price alone about what you're paying for rather than the experience. Because I guess I do haggle with, tipping because if the experience is low I'm, I'm i'm not paying for it if i don't enjoy the experience but if i really enjoy the experience i'll give you more would you consider that a form of haggling or do you think that's completely different i think it's a little separate to be honest with you i think it's um really you know when it comes down to haggling and tipping um and how they relate really i think it's expectation yeah um uh, my expectation when I go into a restaurant, it depends on the restaurant. If I walk into McDonald's and then I walk into a gastro pub and I walk into fine dining, there's going to be different expectations. Yeah. When my wife sees me get frustrated, because I don't show it, I try not to in the restaurants. When I oh, get very frustrated, yeah. she knows because my expectation, if, if I am paying this amount of money and I have no issue paying it, so let's be honest, we all look online before we go into a restaurant, look at the prices. So we know what we're getting into. Yep. I feel that we, you know, maybe I'm assuming. I hope so. I mean, I save up for those big nights. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, 
I, some of my best meals, it, yeah. it wasn't just the food. You know, I, I have this, we, you train a lot of staff. I train a lot of staff. Uh, one of the things that we talk about all the time, um, you know, is A, being prepared. But yeah. a, a great server can overcome a mediocre meal. A bad server can destroy a good meal. Sure. Um, yeah. Not the, the everybody food, agrees with the that. The food, the atmosphere, everything could be perfectly. And just like you said, the server could show up and ruin the entire night. Yes. Or. So, go ahead. Or the other way around. Yeah. Food's okay. I mean, expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like that you said I could go into a McDonald's, I can go into a gastropub, or I can go into fine dining. And, and I, I know typically we're not dipping at a, a McDonald's, but same point from uh, low service expectations to <clears throat> normal service expectations to high service expectations. Is tipping standard the same for all three of those points? No. No? No. I don't think so. Um, so your, your bottom earlier in, in general, you said was 10%. Does that change what your, what your lowest tipping percentage is when you get to fine dining or what? Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you tip for takeout that you went and picked up? Uh, I do. Um, and I don't think that there, I don't look at percentages when I do that. When I, when I go pick up for takeout, um, I'm still going to tip on how well they greeted me. Is it prepared? Is it ready? Um, and I, I look for the opportunity to tip, but I don't start calculating percentages because to be honest, a lot of what I'm tipping on has to do with my time and experience. So I am going to throw a buck or two and it's usually at even $1 or $2 um, or $1.17 or two twenty seven because I want to get that solid number down yeah. at the bottom and that's for takeout um but that's because having worked in the industry i know that that person who's bagging and boxing and all that isn't earning that server minimum wage which is less than three dollars so i i don't tip the same way for takeout as i do but i do tip for takeout do you yes i do tip for takeout uh, but that's why i asked that question because it's the same sliding scale for me um, really? Depending on what, what, where I'm going into um, and the effort that's being shown. And it's not like they're not showing effort, but like if they have to show more effort to take care of me, like a server that I sit down, they're the back waiter, front waiter, side waiter, a waiter flying in from the top, wherever they're coming from. Top waiter, bottom the waiter. Effort, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so, the, the, the effort is, is, is in my head. When I go get pickup, you know, now, trust me, right now during this pandemic, Mm -hmm. I'm just tipping crazy because I just, I really just want these, I know, I, I know how hard these guys are working and they're probably would make more Stand. money on, on the doll or or more money on, you know, unemployment. They're, they're putting their life, you know, not their life on the line, not like that, but they're, they're putting, they're in the risk area. Yeah. There's at but, least some fear associated with it, whether it's a realistic fear or percentage fear, whatever it is, it's still, it's a lot different than what I'm doing the last few weeks. Yeah, me too. And yeah. so I think, but, but that, that's so that, that aside, now I do have a sliding scale. If I walk into places quick service, my tip's going to be smaller. Um, if I'm doing a, let's say a diner, mm -hmm. my diner tip and my gastro, my gastro pub tip are going to be a little, I think if you, if I average them all out, they'd be different. To be bluntly honest, I think I probably tip better at a gastro pub than I would at a diner. That's funny. I, I think percentage wise, I tip the best at a diner. You think of something like a waffle house where I go in and my total meal is nine, 10, $12. And they may or may not have my coffee on there. And I love the waffle house atmosphere. I go in there, the banter, there's craziness. They are talking back to customers. It's, you know, all in good fun. And I, love that atmosphere. They remember your name, they get to know you because that's just the atmosphere that's there. And that $10 tab is going to get a $10 tip or more, depending on how long I'm sitting there and what's going on. So I think about a diner, especially, I mean, kudos to Waffle House, that atmosphere is about my favorite. They're getting a big tip percentage wise. Yeah, now okay. you go to a gastro pub and I get You're normal more. service. Yeah. Yeah, I'm spending more. I'm, I'm, I've got a $50 tab. 
Yeah. I'm still going to give them 10 bucks and that's 20%, but either way I'm giving 10 bucks for my experience. One's more expected and one's just over the top, but either way that server and that server are getting the same total amount and right or wrong. I just walk into a diner and think, Oh, I'm going to over tip here. I now just feel guilty because <laughs> I do not do that. Um, no. and you know what? And it's funny because some of the best service I've ever gotten is, is diners and bars. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's be honest. Um, I lived, I, I, I lived in New York for a few years, you know, I think it was seven years around that area. Um, and, and Chelsea area. And I went back, I think a year or two ago and I, I went back to my first place where I first moved to the city and I walked up and down my road. It was off the 23rd street. And I was okay. looking around and I'm like, all the places are gone except for two concepts, diners and mm -hmm. bars. Mm -hmm. All the others were gone. I mean, some were, you know, we were on like TV shows and all this stuff, but the diners and the bars usually always stick around. I, I, I think so. And I, I, why do you think that is? Do you think that's because of tipping culture? Do you think that's service? Or do you think that's just the, uh, the, the uh, business model? Well, I think it's service. I mean, I, you, I let's agree. say you go to a bar, you go to a diner because you like that 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 person, the bartender, the server, the who, who um, whomever, um, and so you tip them well, so they stay, and then they the restaurant retains them, and we know mm -hmm. retaining is the game. Oh my. Oh my goodness. So if you could retain your, I've been to a place that has the same, roughly, there's always like 20 or 30% sure. in and out. Sure. Roughly like has the exact time. same staff. People wait to get a bartending gig at Westside Tavern. You're just not brought, you're not hired like, you know, they don't put out resumes. Like there's a waiting list to say, hey, when there's a spot open, I'm working down the street. When you guys get a spot open, I want to work there. Right. <clears throat> right. They know so, who they're going to hire when they, yes. Yes. And, and I, and, and Tyler might be a little different, but, you know, there's been some, you go and you get the same gentleman or, or, or lady that, that has been there forever, knows it inside and out. Your coffee is never low. It's never, just no. spot on. And now I feel really guilty that I don't tip her more. Oh, because I got to I gotta, I gotta reflect and have like sit back and go, man, am I a, am I that word? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Cause I'm, I'm thinking of total dollar amount, not just percentage of my bill. And I know at a diner, my bill's so low. Like I'm, I'm giving, and then it's just me. Yeah. But I'm also sitting that little st stool up at the front, like overlooking the grill cook, which is, I don't know, that's entertainment for me. I do have um, a question for you. Yeah, ready. And this is one that I actually, I grapple with this one, I'll be honest with you. So I'm not going to tell you what, how I feel. Okay. Yeah. If you tip, if when, when you're tipping and you have cash and you tip in cash, do you leave less because you think that it's better for the, the server to take that money home that she can, or he can do what he wants with them. I'm not going to get details on that one sure. or more when you tip with cash. Strange. Um, great question on do I tip more when it's cash versus card? I, I, I'd like to say I don't change my tipping strategy because I'm still tipping for the experience. And I know overall at the end of the day, money is money. But that being said, if I, am tipping in cash and my percentage let's say comes out to $18 that's that's what I would have tipped on a card and I've got a 20 in my pocket I'm leaving the 20 because I'm not gonna haggle over two dollars I'm not going to walk out of that <clears throat> restaurant with two dollars in my pocket because I'm sorry it's 2020 what am I gonna do with two dollars in my pocket well I would buy a lottery ticket but the two dollars I think would go so far with me in my pocket, but it'd be just an incredible experience if they got $20 versus 18. Cause in that server's mind, when they open that up and they see a 20, I think that's, that's huge. And I, I like sharing that experience. So I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself out of it, but I probably get more when it's cash. Cause I think that that's a more uplifting experience for the server to receive cash. So I probably get more. I'm talking myself out of it. Do you think in the monetary it's worth more to the server? Cash. Well, we know we know that it is because yeah. the the tip outs, the taxes, everything that they should be doing probably aren't doing goes directly yeah. into their pocket. Yeah, because okay. mm -hmm. I mean that leads to you know kind of the next thought in my head, and that would be tip pooling. Sure. Or uh, so tip pooling versus tip outs. 
And let's make sure that we've clarified oh, yeah. the difference. Tip pulling. Wait, big difference. Yeah. So t- tell me about tip pulling versus tip outs. Tip pulling versus tip outs. Tip pulling is as a staff. Now, some do it just front of the house. Mm-hmm. Some do it front and back of the house. Mm-hmm. Some do it just servers. There's a lot of different ways we can get into detail. I'm not going to go down that road. But there's a pool. But basically, it's a pool that everybody gets from. Doesn't matter what shift you got. I mean, there, unless you do a daily one, but let's, like I said, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. Right. Um, it's basically done daily or weekly. I've seen monthly. Doesn't matter what shift you get or what tables you get, you're all going to get a cut of the same amount of money. Um, it's supposed to invoke teamwork. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, but I guess you're more pro on that one. Uh, but tip out would be more of tipping out your 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 busser or your, um, your your hostess who get a lower rate, and then basically the servers are paying the part of their salary. I mean, I guess you could put it. Right. Um, and right. rarely do I see kitchens get tipped out, other than the uh, the, the the comical buy the kitchen a six pack of beer on the bottom of the menu thing. Right. 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 Um, tip pool, and I know you said that it's uh, probably something that I would like because it promotes teamwork. I, I actually do not like it quite at all because I, I don't think that it promotes teamwork. Um, uh, that's from experience because conceptually it should, but I don't think that it does. Um, and from a consumer standpoint, I definitely don't like it either because when I went to reward somebody for a job well done, it, it loses the impact when I know that they're going to have to share that tip with everybody else at the front of the house. And so my inclination to tip actually goes down when I learn that they have to tip pool. Have you ever asked? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. It, it, depending on, depending on the atmosphere, depending on what's going on, I'm like, do you get all this? Especially if it's cash. Like, no, I tip pool. I'm like, damn. Damn. Yeah. Cause then my first thought is, well, I should over tip to compensate, but I'm like, I'm, I, I don't have that. I, I, to, to be able to overcompensate for the entire team, it's yeah. so hard. So I think, I think it breeds a little bit of animosity. Oh, and um, discouragement for hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, there's some people that are, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're just stars. I mean, they could run circles. I was an okay server. I wasn't great, but I wasn't bad. I was really good in front of the customer. I was good customer facing, uh, but I wasn't at the, like some of these guys are and, and ladies are rock stars that can just yeah. run circles. Like you, they just remember everything. I don't have that kind of memory. I have to write it down or I'm going to sure. forget it. I'm pro writing it down. If a server does not write down my order, I don't trust a word that they say. I'm like, get my order right. Period. Like write it. How down. about this? Does this bother you? Using the pad? No, not at all. Yeah. No. I don't, I don't mind it at the table. I don't mind Because you think about it. We're the only industry that we give our card to somebody, physically give to them, not on the internet, like hands them a card, and they take this little card, and they run into the back, and they go right. behind this little wall, and they go beep, 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 and they come back out and hand you, and you're like, there's no other issue. Like, you go shopping, they, they swipe it right there in front of you, or not chip it right there or, in front of you. Or you go to Europe, that, that card doesn't actually ever leave your hand. They bring the machine yep. to you, and yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, and I that's, think we're going towards that. Oh, yeah, more and more. And I, and I think with... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think to, it's going to be, I think we're going to leap, leapfrog that and go straight to everything is almost prepaid by your phone. You just, oh, absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. There'll be a lot, a lot of post payment um, or at least a hold on your card until you're done and then it charges you the amount. And then you get an email with the receipt and then you can, you tip right then. Like, I mean, l- look at uh, mobile fencing. I mean, that's really the next, the next evolution of this of people walking in and it, it, you're basically doing everything off your phone, tip off your phone. Can't wait. Or off my watch. Like if I could just do everything off my watch, leave my phone at home, be great. Yeah. I'd probably tip more because of the convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, that's, a, that, that's true. Convenience. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting topic. <laughs> we'll put that one on a, uh, a future discussion. Um, so on the tip pool or tip amounts, um, let's talk about um, day shift versus night shift. And this is for the tipping uh, side of the conversation. If you're, if you're for tipping – then something I've noticed that happens quite a bit is if you're working a night shift, you, ha- you work fewer of them to make the same amount of money as somebody in the same restaurant works the day shift. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that's um, something that would go away if we removed tipping from the industry? Yeah, it would. Yep. 
but it's 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 the same thing in in other industries that have three shifts. What what shifts make more money? The third shift. Yeah, I mean, correct. Yeah. I mean, so I, I think that uh, I think that'd go away. I really do. Um, now, with saying all this, you know, do I think tipping would would uh, the night and day would would change? I think as a whole, the industry would just be it would just it'd be a brush fire. It would be so so difficult, so hard on the co- consumer, so hard on the the server, so hard on the the operator that it's not going to happen. I just don't. As much as I love Danny Myers and all those guys, sure, I love what they're doing and give. Hey, hey let's try it out. Somebody's um, got somebody's got to go first. They're pioneers in it, and I I'm eagerly watching from the sides to see when we jump on that. Yeah, yeah, we tried in Portland. Yep. We tried in Portland, Maine. Um, it was a. I mean, it was two sides of the fence. One of the restaurants did it here. I'm not going to use names, but they went no tipping. And, and um, the city stepped in. The city said, no, we're not doing this. So I it's think changed. it's, it's going to get to oh, – that's just what I was told. Now, they, they went back to it, but that's what I was told. Okay. Um, but I think that's where – this where it gets a little – this was going to get funky. If, so, like, if one city allows it, but another city doesn't or state, what is the customer, consumer going to know? Are we going to have to put this on our menu now? And we, we all know the number one marketing piece in your restaurant is your menu. I don't want to put that on my menu. So, and, so let, let me ask you this, like uh, putting the service line on there or not, I, to be honest, who cares if it says service on there? Let's say that you build it into your menu cost. So you, you've consulted several businesses. You, you, you consult quite a bit. What's difficult, well, di- excuse me, what's difficult about, orchestrating a menu price increase people are used to p- paying a certain amount for certain things and the ones that go out the most know what they're looking for so adding a price that has everything included into your menu pricing is that what you're trying to talk you're talking about no, no i just mean in general menu price increase what yes. are the difficulties <laughs> well there's a lot a did you cost out your menu which we all know is very rare right. um Number two is like if you're going to cost out, if you're going to add cost to the menu, you need to have a reason why. The reason that you need that why is because you're going to have to tell that to your staff and to your customer because they're going to ask why. Have you ever had to take the menu prices back down after a menu increase, or were you able to sustain it for a couple of weeks and then get your customers used to it? They'll eventually get used to it. You're just going to, no matter what, you're not going to make everybody happy. Um, right. Menu increases are, are difficult. Um, you can't, sure. you can, sometimes, depending on what your past is, because that's the thing about menu, menu increases have a lot to do with the past. It just does. If you look, you know, commodities go up, and with what's going on now, they're going to go up even more. If you put something, if you were doing something for $10 and, and you cost it out and you realize you're losing your shirt, you can't go up to 15. You just can't. You, you will lose, that will, especially if it's a big driver in sales, you will lose the set, you'll lose the, the amount sold. You will. And if it's one of your biggest drivers, that could, you know, that could be a big issue. Um, so you have to have a menu plan to mm-hmm. increase, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think so if think we're trying this to tipping, it's a whole different ball game because we have never ever put labor into food cost ever no no um but if we did and do you think that it would have to be a slow gradual rise in the menu prices because obviously that's how the businesses are going to have to recoup their um, uh, their 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 funds for now having to pay the server for it but as a consumer how long do you think it would get it would take for you as a consumer or for your general population to get used to these new prices. Your burgers, let's say your burgers ten dollars, and now your burgers suddenly thirteen dollars. How long do you think it's going to take for them to get used to it, where that supplemental change was for labor, not food? But it doesn't matter to the consumer. It's ten dollars now. It's thirteen dollars. How long is that going to take? A couple weeks? A couple months? Generation. Oh, really? Uh, but don't you do menu price uh, uh, increases now with, with different businesses that you consult? Yeah, but with, with, okay. uh, with you think it takes a generation to, to, for them to get used to it? No, but for, it, for the consumer to know it's about the labor and not tipping, that will take a generation. Well, they don't have to know. Just raise it. 
Because if somebody wants to tip at the end of the day, they can tip. You just remove the tip line or the expectation of it. I think, it was, you know, people are going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to want to know why. And I, I think the consumer, because um, the restaurants are going to do this, are not going to be your, your your typical diners, I don't think. This is going to, I think when it starts, it's going to be, you know, more of the um, eclectic, uh, unique style places, um, which is your consumer is a little more educated, I feel, at those places. Not more educated, more educated about the, in, uh, about the industry, not education. Sure. That means nothing. We all know that. They don't care what bachelor you have. What you what you've done and what you can do, right. uh, but educated on the on on the industry, um, I think that takes time. I don't. I mean, if you do a small increases, still you still even when we tell when I consult with somebody when they do small increases, I open book. People want to know transparency. That's the buzzword of 2020. Sure. They want to know you know where it comes from and why. And so if I've seen it at I've seen it in action, why did this go up two dollars? Well, beef is going through the roof right now. Why sure. is banking more expensive during the summer? I don't know why. Just it it is. Why is avocado off your menu right now? Except, yeah. Exactly. I mean, remember a couple of years ago when lime was more expensive than cocaine? I mean, it's, it's like the drug cartels are taking over like lime orchards. Going price for cocaine, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not doing cocaine. We're gonna we're uh, we got uh, four we got four bowls of limes over there. <laughs> Goodness. Um, cool. Okay, so that brings me to my my final question, um, and that's on tipping versus not tipping let's let's say that we're able to convince the world to go to a non-tipping um uh, business model what steps do all businesses have to do in order to make this change they got to go uh to make a change from going from tipping to non-tipping the first thing the owner has to do is get up go to home depot you know, buy a nice big old chain and lock and just close the doors. <laughs> I, I, it's, it, it's, it, to me, you look at anybody that's in this business knows if you're good, if you're good at what you do mm -hmm. on an average throughout the nation, I'm not trying to get in New York or bought, through the, if you're good at what you do, you make six cents on the dollar. You look at how much your labor costs, just labor, not management, you know, mm -hmm. what, 19, 20, 20 something mm -hmm. percent. Um, all together with management and everything, it could be up in the 30s. Um, food costs is another, if you know, 28 to 35, depending on where you're at. Um, you start adding all the stuff, you know, fixed costs. Is, and it, you add it all up, insurances, dram shop, whatever you keep, rent and water, and that's all going up too. It's not going down. Right. The margins are so thin. Where is that going to come from? And if you tell me many prices, I'm going to throw my coffee at you. Uh, so where else would it come from? So, so you're saying that there's exactly. no effective strategy for businesses in the U.S. economy to be able to make that transition? Not as a whole. Can we do it in fine dining? We've done it in fine dining. Okay. Can we do it in certain, in, in certain niche ones? Absolutely. Can we do that at a diner? I don't think so. Can we do it in the diner in New York City? Yeah. Can we do it in a diner in the middle of Maine? I don't think so. I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I guess I'm being a little bit against it. It's not that I'm against it. I, I don't care. You know, I would be fine by doing it. I, um, I enjoy tipping. I also think that I, it's, I, um, I, I do. And, but I just don't think that the way that restaurants are set up right now and that it's a viable option. I walked into, when they raised the minimum wage from $11, or is this in Portland? I think it was from 10 something and they wanted, you know, they want to go to 15 and you know, what happened to a lot of restaurants, they just, they lost a dishwasher. They paid the kitchen, maybe a buck more and we all do the dishes. Um, mm -hmm. But we were in, I was in a large group of people. It was a community, um, you know, I guess uh, like a, not a debate, but just kind of going through the rules and a, and a lady, you know, a gentleman said, where's this money coming from? Who's paying this extra three or four or $5? Yeah. And a lady stood up, and goes profits. I just got up and left. I was like, I, I, I'm not. I'm not going. Nothing's going to help me here. Um, it, it's it's the whole adage. Everybody that works in in restaurant business, front or back of the house, go says this. Everybody in the world should work two weeks front of the house and two weeks back of the house just to get an understanding. And that's why we like to tip because we know how hard oh, they yeah. work. I, it's, it's harder the than the most fun, hardest job ever. If you're ever. doing it right. Like it's, yeah. If you're doing it right. I mean, it is not an easy job, both front and back. And let's not even get into no. that. 
Right. Um, that should be another episode, front and back. Uh, sure. But sure. I just don't think the way, the way it's structured now is it would, would be a viable option. I, I, I do disagree. Uh, well, no, I, I agree that the way it's structured now, there's no viable option. And I think that we've got to have a marketing campaign from a collection of restaurants that want to do it in order to convince the business owners and the, the, um, the clients, the customers coming in about what that societal change looks like and feels like and what the benefits are. And then you've got to work with staff to make sure that they're able and ready to take that on because the same issues with tip pooling is if one person's working harder than another, now suddenly they're making the same as somebody who's not, that's where your issues are. So it really comes down to marketing and management on them, making sure that that mindset is right for the staff and the guests coming in. And where you're saying you don't think it happened, I'm gonna go one, one step below that and say, it'd be so hard that it's nearly impossible. But as far as outlining strategy, I think it's there with marketing and, and proper management and just change management strategies. I, I think where <laughs> I guess where where it comes where where I kind of just like I hit the wall is we're not really known for really adapting uh, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we lag in technology, we lag in training, we lag in a lot of things. Kitchen so, models are the exact same that they have been throughout the early 1900s. Like yeah. there's no change to the way the kitchen layout is. There's no advancement no. in kitchen models, and I don't mean positions but i mean we prep so we do this then we yeah. do this it's like there's there's no uh, efficiency in the kitchen yeah and, and plus you know chefs and owners are so understanding for change they love it love <laughs> it chefs chefs like change they yeah. like, they like modifiers yeah yeah they like modifiers yeah well done steak great. please yeah perfect cool uh well great great talking points um this is this is more fun than I thought it was going to be. This is a whole lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to either doing this one again, uh, some other topics. Um, I, I think it's important that we make sure we talk about the, the struggles from both sides on any topic. And for this one, for tipping culture and the difficulties, the, the excitement of it, uh, what the business would have to embrace in order to move forward, um, or what they can't embrace and why it's going to take, like you said, a generation to be able to make this change happen. Um, I, I feel like I am speaking for you as well and we'll talk to the audience a little bit about, we'd love to hear your perspective on tipping culture, good or bad, right or wrong, what you like, bad experiences when you don't tip um, or great experiences when you wish you could tip more. Why do you tip? What made you do it? Um, and what would it take for you as a consumer to be able to move forward into a world where tipping was no longer the standard. Paul, anything to add before we get out of here? No, I think that's uh, pretty much a good cap to it. Um, yeah, I did, I did enjoy this. This is fun. Let's, let's fun. definitely do this again. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear the feedback, pro and con, I mean, because you can change my mind. I'm, I'm not too stubborn. Yep. yep. I'm, yep. Open, I'm just, very open-minded to, to it. Yeah. I just got to, I, I need the whole plan. You know what I mean? Just not like it, it, this because I said this. Like, well, that doesn't work for me. I need, right. you know, like, all right, well, that makes sense. You know, where are you going to put this in the P&L? That that would be my thing. Whatever you write below or whatever you add, where are you going to put the line item? Okay? That's I love it. Be my you're, number you're, one thing. What's the line item? What's the P&L? And I'm like, oh, what's the thinking about it? What's the concept no, about I it? Want I want to convince hard people. Numbers. And I, I want I'm hard like numbers, thoughts. people. And, yeah, I'm, I'm soft <laughs> skills. Your hard skills. Yeah, that's great. Good. All right. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you.